Is it easy to answer God's call and follow it? To walk on a path unknown, not knowing what the future holds, but to teach us how to walk in faith, even if you have to give up all your aspirations, believing and trusting in the one who holds the future. We have someone who is very, very special. She's the darling of our Women Alive team. I am honored to call in our midst Simone Ribello to share with us her beautiful life's journey of faith. Thank you. Thank you, Aunty Irma. I would like to begin by saying that uh, my journey begins, uh, as a child, I could not sing. And uh, I always wanted to sing, and at that moment, my sister would sing with my aunt, Aunty Fiona sit singing right now with me. And I would be like, Lord, I want to sing for you one day. And it took me like a nine year journey to get a voice, to sing for the Lord. And today, if I'm singing, it's only because the Lord had a great plan for me and sing for only His glory. But here I'm come to share about something new that has started in my life. So it was in the year 2018. In, we were serving at a retreat, like how we conduct retreats, but it was an inner healing re retreat and they were staying overnight. And I remember uh, I was the last to come to the refectory to eat. Me and my cousin had gone and uh, while we were sitting at the retreat, we were sitting in the dining hall, a sister approached us and she asked me, uh, she asked my cousin first, what if God calls you? And my cousin immediately said, I'm becoming a fashion designer. And uh, then sister asked me, what if God calls you? I said, if he calls me, I'll never say a no to him. But that's if he calls me. Uh, and at that moment, she asked no further questions and she left. And I, something spurred in my heart, like she asked no more questions. And I went to the chapel. And I, was, I knelt down, I was praying to the Lord because that question stirred in my heart. I asked the Lord, are you actually calling me, me? And then, and the Lord didn't say anything at that moment. But at that moment, I experienced that I'd have to leave my mom and dad. And that was really not very easy for me. But uh, I remember at that retreat, there was a preacher from Divine who I'm very close to. And I asked her, I asked her sister, please pray for me. Uh, I think the Lord was calling me to religious life, but I don't know. So she prayed for me all night. And through prayer and intercession, the following day she revealed it to me, yes, this is the Lord's plan for you. He's calling you to join religious life. I remember when I shared with her, I have to leave my mom and dad. She said, Simone, even married life, you have to leave your mom and dad. I said, I never thought of that. <laughs> I thought I could take them with me. <laughs> but uh, so I remember when she revealed it to me and one thing very beautiful was the Lord opened my parents' eyes even before I could share with them. I'm so grateful they supported me through this journey. And I remember at that moment, I didn't know any congregation where to go. I have no clue about religious life. And uh, for two years, I waited. I was discerning and I was doing my teacher's training. And I told my dad, I think, Dada, now what to do? Like, should I leave everything? And he's saying, no, the Lord will tell you what to do. And it was in my journey of discernment that the Lord opened my eyes and he said, you have to join an evangelical community. And I said, yes, because I didn't want to lose my charism of singing for the Lord. Because that's the, like the greatest joy I have to sing for him and give him all the glory. And I remember, so it was a, two years and through a sister, I got this community, the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I told the Lord, Whichever, you have instilled this desire in my heart. Wherever you tell me to go, I will go. I did not expect him to send me so far away. This community is in the United States and it's in a, like a very outskirt of the United States in a ranch. 
And uh, so I, but when the Lord said he's taking me there, I said, sure, I'm going. So I visited the community last year. I lived with them for four months. And I'm telling you, it was beautiful. The, my 10 years with my mom serving, I felt like the Lord had, was preparing me for this day to join. And when I was there, the sisters were so happy. They were very loving, very kind to me. They didn't want me to leave. And I told them, when the oldest sister before I left, you know, she said, she's in tears. She's saying, I'm feeling so bad you're going. I said, sister, don't worry. I'm coming back. <laughs> and she was like, the confidence you have and the joy you have, it's what makes us happy. But I'm telling you, because of the support of my parents, for being so supportive and the Lord. So I want to share with you two experiences I had in community. So when I went there, we are a semi-contemplative order. So we don't talk till five in the evening. So the first week I was there, two weeks I had, six weeks I was on silence, silent retreat. And uh, I couldn't call home. And it was during my mom's birthday. My mom and my sister celebrate their birthday in October. And I didn't tell the Lord anything, but yeah, I did, like my sister's birthday went, I didn't feel so bad, but when my mom's birthday came, it was really a little challenge for me to go through, like not to wish her, and I already called, like sister told me to call and inform mama that you'll be on a silent retreat. But still, you know, the desire to can't call her, and I remember at that day in the morning, one of my sisters in the community, she gave me mama's book, <laughs> which was there 14 years ago, and Mama's visited this community, I don't know, very long back, like 14 years back, and they had the book, and she said, I found the book, and I put it in your mailbox. I thought maybe because it's your mom's birthday. I'm telling you, sisters, at that moment, I went to my room, and I had tears rolling down my cheek because I didn't ask the Lord for anything. I didn't want anything. Just that that book gave me so much of assurance that he cares for my needs. And like, I remember even while I was there, I was attending a prayer meeting and I was missing mom and dad a lot. And uh, when I closed my eyes in prayer, the Lord showed me him on the seashore and he's giving me his hand. Okay, and I was so nervous to take it. But the moment I took his hand, I turned into a little baby on my dad's shoulders. And the Lord told me, you have to trust me the way you trust your dad. And I realized that, you know, like how it's, as children, we are not afraid. Dada puts us on our shoulders. He takes us everywhere around. And we know he's holding us safe. The Lord showed me twice in my journey over there that he's going to take care of me, that I'm not alone, and that he loves me very much. And I want to conclude by saying that this new journey in my life is only because of the Lord. And I'm telling you, parents, please support your children if they even think of religious life. Because it's such a joy to join and to serve the Lord through a contemplative order. I'm sorry. Yeah. I want to say I'm so grateful to all of you that has gathered here. And yeah, this plan the Lord has for me, I want you to pray for me as I will be leaving in August. Uh, in a few months, I'll be going. But serving with the Lord, and now I'm serving, as I'm going to be serving as a religious, has been the biggest blessing. Because when he's about to do something new, he doesn't look at your past self. And I'm not saying I was the best student in school or nothing like that. I was the most naughtiest child of my family. And, and my parents, like, even though I had so many failures up and down, they never gave up on me. And even my, I know the Lord will never give up on me because he loves me so much and he loves each one of you today. And I'm so grateful you are here and thank you for listening. Thank you.